Hi, everyone. What up, what up, what up, what up? Waiting for people to come in. We're about to go live. We're going to talk about Caribbean Med School. SGU in particular. Waiting for those followers to come in. Let's go! What's up, everybody who's joining? Hey, guys. How are you? We're here to answer any questions you have, so let us know. We're going to be talking about Caribbean medical schools. The two of us went to St. George's, and we're always getting asked questions. Joining us will be our friend, Parmita. She's actually currently a student at St. George's, so we are excited. Hey! Paraphinator. We met you back in SGU. Thanks up, for everybody? having the house party with us. What up, everybody? What up, everybody? Thanks, Naya. I hope you're enjoying Paris. I can't wait to see your Paris photographer pictures. Ooh. There's our friend Nita. All right, guys. View. Go, Go live. live. Waiting, waiting, waiting. What's up, everybody who's coming in? What's up, everybody who's coming in? Wave, wave back at you. Uh oh, there, there she, she is. is. Woo! Hi. Can you hear us? Okay, I can hear you now. All I right. can hear you now too. Can everybody out there hear us all? It looks like everybody Hi. can hear us. So, Parmita, we were just saying that we're going to just talk about uh, you. This, this live has actually started because of your couple posts, actually. Yeah. Parmita posted a couple of very, very nice posts about like Caribbean med school and our school in general. We're alumni of SGU. She's currently there. So we're going to give you guys a perspective of past, which is us, <laughs> and present, which is her, um, on island life, on SGU, what to do to get in, uh, what to do when you're there, how to get residencies after, and so forth. So Parmita. We we have all the answers. <laughs> we have all the answers. At least, Between us. At least I do. We, do. <laughs> uh, we have all the answers, so it's good. So um, should we get into questions first? Should we just talk about it? Why don't we, why don't we say, what do you want to talk about first? I think we should just um, talk about the, the common questions that we get. So one of the common questions that I get, and I'll start from the beginning, is how did you choose a Caribbean medical school? Ooh, why did you good, choose a Caribbean good medical good school? <laughs> um, and... The, the reason is, is, you know, when I was um, an undergrad, I actually decided towards the end that I wanted to just um, apply for medical school. And so I graduated a year early and SGU has rolling admissions. And I knew from my grades that if I had wanted to go to a U.S. medical school, I would have had to take either a post back route or I would have had to take extra science classes. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to waste any time. I knew I wanted to get to medical school. So that was my reasoning, and I think for a lot of people these days, U.S. medical schools are so, um, you know, competitive that you are required to do a lot of extra things, and if it's something that you know you want to do, then you can just start right away, and, you know, the Caribbean was the option that I chose for myself. And I know in Canada, it's very competitive. You guys have even fewer medical schools. Yeah, we have, so in my province, we have the most, and there's like six of them. I applied to all and got like mm -hmm. nothing. And then I, I was like one of the few people who actually applied to some of the American schools, but I didn't plan that out very well. So I was in the same situation. I did not want to do a, like a post back or like do a master's or anything. I just wanted to get yeah. straight to school. So, And a, a lot of the people that I met actually at St. George's had done the post back route too. So it's not like it was a guarantee. So yeah. I definitely didn't want to spend time with that. And so that's why I chose it for all of you that are always asking, why did you choose it? Why did you choose it? Um, and then what else is a common question that you get? So somebody, I'm going to, we're going to do, I think we should do this also because a lot of people, some people are asking questions. Okay, so yeah, we're so going to do, so somebody, then. somebody wrote about attrition rate and somebody was writing about like, oh, do they weed people out? Uh, in my opinion, and from what I know, no, they do not weed people out. It's just based on you and your scores and what you put into it. So if you put in the hard work, you can make it out just like us. Me, me and her made it out totally fine. We matched what we wanted to match. We got the residencies. We're doing what we will love, and there's no issues. And, and Mita, I think um, you actually touched upon it, too, when you were saying that they might accept people who have lower MCAT or lower GPA, but then they expect you to work as hard as a medical student. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah you definitely, like, if you didn't do well in undergrad and you know what your study weaknesses were, you can't just continue doing the same things and expect to, like, pass if 
they, yeah. just because they accept you doesn't mean that they're gonna keep keep you going the whole way that's it's your time to like put in the work so I mean I think their exams are very fair like their questions aren't that hard and like the ones I get stumped on I'm like oh I know I read this but now right it's, yeah. it's not something like I've never seen this before what are they getting no. at and, so, and after you see the question you go back to your notes it's there and you just yeah. like forgot it and I, I I definitely think too at the end of the day they have to prepare you for the USMLEs you still have to take those lights and you wouldn't want to go to a school that wasn't preparing you for those exams if it was just easy to get through and then you know you sit for your boards and you don't pass it's very difficult to continue on to residency and things like that so I think um, when they ask about, you know, do they purposely fill you out? No, they don't. They're actually giving you a second chance to become a doctor. Now it's up to you to show them that you can do it. Yeah. You got to be like, going whatever you go ahead. <laughs> I, I, Like any school, they wouldn't want their numbers to look bad. They want their students to continue going, paying tuition and succeeding. Like, I don't understand yeah, why yeah, they yeah. think they want to fail you out. <laughs> no, nah, it's just dude, you, everybody is... Everybody is capable of getting the grade. It's your job to get the grade. There's no curve. There's no nothing. You get an A, you got an A. You got a C, you got a C. That's just plain and simple. Obviously, you know, you can't, you just have to, it's, and it's not that you have to work harder. Like, it's the same school as an American school. It's just literally in the Caribbean. And you have to work just as hard, if not harder, obviously. The only reason that people say, like, oh, you work that much harder than the Caribbean is because it is sometimes hard to get back if you don't pull the proper scores. That's 100% true. If you get low board scores, obviously, it's going to be tougher, not impossible to come back. But you have to bust your butt out there, and you have to literally just like anything in life, in my opinion, anything in life, whether it's medicine, whether it's finance, whether it's, you know, whatever it is. Sorry, I'm getting like aggressive. Yeah, you're getting kind of aggressive. Hassan Minaj. Like, <laughs> I'm not Hassan Minaj. I'm Hassan Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> got a passion on the subject. Well, the, uh, the, another question we got is, is it true that you need an average of 70% in every course to move on and an overall 75% average? I actually don't remember. Do you know this? I don't definitely know this, but I know that, yes, you have to have, a, like, if you, you will fail an exam if it's below a 70, but that doesn't mean you're going to fail the, the term. The term, okay. It's different when we were there because ours was grades, but they have one grade for the term. You guys have one grade for the term now, right? Yeah, so at yeah, the so end of the had, term, we had we grades one. per class. Yeah, we had grades per class. So how do you how are, how are they grading it now? So now like every exam will have like a number and then at the end of the term you have so many points that you're supposed to get and oh, okay. And then based yeah. on that. Because uh, it is so we have an integrated program and that's why it's it's like that. It's not class wise anymore. Like every class is in one exam. Yeah, I heard like back when we were doing it, it was like path, physio. Um, you know, microbio, but I remember my friends who were in American medical schools were doing it the integrated way. So SGU is already catching up and, and doing it that way for you guys. That's great. <clears throat> yeah, I love the program this way because I know um, even next year we're still integrated, whereas the class above me isn't. So Okay, nice. Um, another question. Hi, I'm currently a student at SGU. Do you guys feel like SGU's curriculum and classes prepared you well for STEP? Obviously, bro. Obviously, it did. <laughs> Let's go. No, it definitely did. Like we were, we were well prepared. That being said, we studied a lot for boards. We took mm -hmm. course. We studied a couple weeks after the course. Yeah. We were in. We took a lot of practice. We exams. took like 10, 11 practice exams. We lived like you know. I never. I go to the gym almost every day. I didn't go to the gym once during that time. He got some like. I got flabbiness. some like flabby <laughs> chest at that point. She was making fun of me. So. Yeah, I mean, we studied really hard, and I think that the the classes do prepare you, but you have to study on your own too. And I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, like you can only you can only rely so much on your professors and your classes. It really depends on your own self-learning too. And group study was something that we did and quizzing each other back and forth that really helped too. Okay. Um, do you know anyone who matched to Canada? Um, I so, do. I've met a bunch of the Canadians that matched and they were talking at SGU's um, meet and greet. Um, there are, they are there. They match. A lot of them are in family medicine or internal medicine. Um, but there was an uh, orthopedic surgeon. Ooh. Oh, nice. So. Um, and then I actually know a lot of friends who are from Canada that matched in Buffalo because Buffalo is pretty close to the border. And so a lot of my friends from Toronto actually went to, um, you know, do family medicine residencies in Buffalo. One of my friends just matched uh, cardiology in Canada as well. So definitely an option it's you know it you can get the if you really want to be there you'll figure out a way to be there that's that's the way you got to look at it 
Um, another question I got is SGU accredited by the US Department of Education? It is. And I actually took out, um, you know, federal loans from the US Department of Education. So it definitely is accredited. Not all Caribbean medical schools are, but St. George's is one of them. Yeah, someone asked me about tuition as well. Let me just real quick go back since you just talked about that. Are there any payment plans? Yeah, so you have to take federal loans, basically the answer to that. And I think I wanted to know, like, what does it cover? I wasn't sure. Does it cover books and, like, education? It, covered, it covers everything. So um, I, you know, it covers, you know, your room, your boarding. It gives you extra for, like, for example, like when you were interviewing for residency, there was enough money to do that. Um, you're traveling back and forth, your flights. There was definitely enough um, loans that you can take out. You know, St. George's is obviously a private medical school, so it's much more expensive than the, the schools in the United States. But the way that I looked at it, I still remember I was complaining to one of my friends. I was like, man, these loans, like we're taking out so much money for this, like it just sucks. And then his response was, people take mortgages out and they're willing to pay mortgages for 30 years. This is your education, your life, your career. What could be a better investment than this? So that's how I feel about going to, to school and having to pay for it. <laughs> Permita, why don't you yeah, give us good. some? Why don't you give us some uh, island life? What's going on in the island so people know how island life is? Um, well, Cause you guys, because you guys have it so... way better. Than, you guys have it way better than us <laughs> because you guys yes, have all these restaurants cool. now. Yeah, actually, they they build a lot of like new resorts and like really nice restaurants here. So I always try to try them out whenever we get a chance. But honestly, like most of the time, you're in your study hall and everyone is like very passionate about which study hall they are dedicated to Wait, so you taylor, see taylor or mod bro taylor or mod. i'm ta taylor taylor hey taylor <laughs> gay and his spot in taylor it like overlooked the window that was there so yes. you can <laughs> yep um so you're mostly there but then like the tradition is to just hit the beach right after exams and like try a couple of restaurants out the next couple of nights and then get back to it. So Yeah, I know people are always saying to me like, oh my God, it must have been so amazing. It's like, actually, you're, you know, you're sitting at a desk most of the time studying. But it is good. I mean, they have beautiful views. They just made this insane gym. Yeah. Oh my God, I haven't the gym been is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. The I mean, gym is like my favorite place. Yeah, they opened like three days after we left, but hopefully oh, we're coming no. back. Hopefully we're coming back soon. So I'm gonna hit that gym. Yeah, we got a new gym, we have new basketball courts, and we have this, um, we moved the volleyball, outdoor volleyball, to on campus now. Yeah, so I saw you guys are playing. It's so. a lot of fun, fun to be had. Nice. So, um, someone commented, it's all about getting good scores now due to the competition everywhere in both the Canada and U.S. Um, yeah, I mean, especially, like, you know, if you didn't score well on your MCAT or your GPA and you went to a Caribbean school, now when you're, when you're coming afterwards for residency, you do have to score really well on the step scores because you are competing against U.S. students, and so you need to have a little bit higher of a score. Which is not impossible. People think, like, high score, oh, how am I going to get that? It's, like, very easily – I don't want to use the word easily, but it's very attainable if you just study properly, if you study right, and if you study, like, the proper amount of time. So, you know, don't be scared of it. I think people – most people's – People are scared, like, oh, what if I go there and don't make it back? Um, don't, you don't, there's definitely people who don't make it back, but you're very, the, the majority of people make it back easily, and uh, it's fun. Um, one of the questions we're getting is, why did you do Caribbean, not USADO? I got that question, too, actually, earlier. Okay. Um, for me, personally, I was think, was considering it, but then... I don't know. I, I guess at that time, I didn't know enough about DO schools. I didn't, and the people that I was talking to and asking questions, most of them had gone to SGU. I had two really close friends, Jaffer and Ellie, <laughs> who um, had gone to SGU and they loved it. They came back after a semester and were telling me how much they really liked it. And so because of the personal touch to it, I decided to, to go there. Personally, though, like, okay, so I'm going to be honest, right? Like, DO, great. MD, US, great. If you have the opportunity, obviously, to go in the US, you, you usually pick that over going to a Caribbean island or going abroad. That's a fact. But I, me, myself, I, I'll just put it in perspective for you. I'm a pulmonary critical care fellow at a good program. And my colleagues, my co-fellows are, I have USMD colleagues, I have USDO colleagues, and I have SGU colleagues, and I have other Caribbean colleagues. So, it really, at the end of the day, is not going to make that huge of a difference. Um, the difference lies, sure, you know, 
it, it, it just becomes a little bit harder if you come out to the Caribbean, but again, not impossible, very attainable, and you have us to look at for that. So, you know, that's, don't, you know, if, if you, if you're getting into DO school and in the U.S. and you want to go, power to you, go ahead. Oh, that's this is the question that we were talking about. You all are clearly succeeding, but what are some characteristics of your peers that weren't keeping up? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about that. That's all, all yours. Right, so. I'm waiting for this. All yours, right? All, all right, yours. So listen, all so, yours. Okay, so there's, and this is this is my opinion, obviously, so don't nobody take it personal. But there's people who come to the island first time who are kind of, in a sense, some people, I would say the majority are ready. The minority are not ready. They're just kind of still in college, college mode, which means, like, they're still having fun. They're still partying, which is totally fine. But when you come to the island and if you find yourself, like, you know, going out every single night, or like just messing around and not studying, like, you know, it's it, or going to the beach every day, like that's not normal. And that's not what med school is about. Med school is about buckling down, sitting at your desk for eight to nine hours a day, cr cr not cramming, but like jamming information in your head, going to class and just studying, studying, saying repetition, repetition, repetition. If you divert from that, you're going to be one of those people who have trouble and you have to realize that it's more and in med school is not really about being a genius. It's about learning how to time manage and basically figure out what works and using that to your advantage so it's like it's, just, it's mainly about time management and then basically discipline if you have discipline you can make it through med school if you don't have discipline if you're still kind of immature and if you're coming in you're going to have trouble so you really really need to buckle down and that's that's what happened that's like the tendencies that i saw who people who didn't make it who failed out who whatever the case is like they were just not doing what they were supposed to be doing and that's just it's just clear cut um, this is a question for you. With the integrated curriculum, what studying tips do you have for incoming students? Um, I like the integrated because it actually makes a lot of things make sense and fall into place. So when you're learning the anatomy, you're learning all of it and it just makes sense. So all you need to do is stay on top of the lectures, do a few passes. So I always review the lecture right after um, the lecture is done that day. So I'll go home and review them and then I'll look at it again on the everything all on the weekend. And then before an exam, I'll look at everything all over again. I like to sometimes organize it when I'm getting closer to the exam so that I watch all of the pathology ones in order, all of the micro ones in order, because on the day that you're learning them, they'll be like micro path, micro path. Um, so I like to watch them in order and hear them as like one solid story sometimes. But other than that, like, you'll see that everything lines up in the integrated program and I really like it. That's great. You on that sketchy or what? All I hear about <laughs> oh, is sketchy. And, and sketchy. And sketchy. <laughs> so let me tell you, and I tell this to my brother too, you guys are lucky because I had to come up with my own mnemonic. What's sketchy? Pick. Sketchy is like this YouTube oh, channel no. you just watch and it like basically a guy animates everything for you, like all the microbio stuff. And if you just like memorize the animation, you'll memorize it for the test. Really? Yeah. So they have, that's it's cool. I mean, it's like obviously technology. Yeah. It's it's the med school version of Netflix and chill. <laughs> you watch yeah, 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 yeah. You just like watch it, and then like you just easily like Warfarin. They have like a guy going to war, and that's how they remember it. It's like it just it's, it makes it like photogenic. Yeah. Photo. Banco Bancomycin is this van that shows up in all the pictures. <laughs> it's, just, it's like easy to remember it. Yeah, so I had to make my own mnemonics back for this. So that's you guys. Are just <laughs> Um, if I don't have all the prereq science courses, does SGU have pre, uh, pre med course? It does, yeah. Um, I mean, they I don't know much and about it, but I know they have. Somebody it. asked me how long is pre med, so I had a couple friends who did pre med. I, I don't know if you have friends in pre med. I think Maybe. it's two years. There's a girl on my soccer team who's doing it. I know that they come out a little bit earlier than if you did a full pre med and then came here. I think it depends. So, when at least when I was there, so I had a couple friends who were doing pre med or who did pre med, and you have to take like a, a, a test. And depending on how you do on the test, they put you like you're one, two, three, something like that. So that's how it is. But don't quote us on it because we didn't do it. But um, it's yeah. definitely like I think two years on average, most people do two years and then and then go on to med school. Yeah. How did you pick SGU over other Caribbean schools? Um, for me, again, I had my two friends that had gone and they spoke so well about it. So I felt comfortable going there. It was the first time I was leaving home. So the fact that I knew people that were going to be there was a key factor. And also it's a reputation. Um, a lot of the It's students... the Harvard of the Caribbean, <laughs> baby. Let's go. <laughs> Definitely. If you haven't seen that episode, you should watch it. And that will continue. I actually was watching ER reruns and I saw that. <laughs> No, it's a good school. It's a, it's, it's a good school. Um, yeah. Does the school give you MBBS or MD? It gives you an MD. Yep. 
and you still need to pass your USMLE exams. Everyone who wants to be, you know, a doctor in the U.S. has to pass those. With flying colors. 240s. Uh, That's goals. I'm That's considering going to St. George's. I'm just working as a respiratory therapist right now. That's great. Wonderful. I mean, you're getting a lot of experience in the healthcare field, so. Awesome. What else? I have no on? idea where you guys are in the questions, so I'm going to try to them. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, what else should we talk about? Um, Mita, what else? What's going on over there? Tell us, why don't you tell us about um, the professors? A lot of people ask about professors. Because okay. you, you have okay. the new professors. We do. There's some you'll love. There's a lot of them who are couples, and they're very cute. Um, <laughs> are the bees still, Dr. Bees still there? I don't Dr. think so. Bees. They teach Pat, like, a, I forget their name. No. But go I don't ahead. know, but there's the Clunses. There's, um, but yeah, so the professors, some of them you'll love, some of them will be guest lecturers. So we have a few guest lecturers who actually come from like Canadian universities, um, some from American universities who come down for like two or three lectures. Um, I mean, their slides are pretty straightforward. Anything you really need to know is in the slide already. They like tell you a little bit more, but it's not like undergrad where I was like frantically writing everything down. Yeah. Um, so even if it's somebody else doing the same lecture, it, it works out. You're not gonna miss any information. And most of us just use studying afterwards. Like yeah. the profs are going to give you the outline, but you got to go pick up all the information that you need to know in the end. Someone's asking if you use any other resources outside of your lecture slides that you found helpful for SGU exams. Um, for the exams, honestly, you could just stick to the lectures and have no problem. That's what I found. I, I don't think that they pull anything like out of the hat like they're not doing anything crazy but, yeah. um but i personally i like to like take a quick look through my first aid see if there's any information in there that like i would want to supplement and then um depending on the subject like i like brs books i like um sketchy i've started to use sketchy <laughs> Um, pathoma is key when you're doing path. I think that's like my favorite yeah. thing ever. <laughs> you know, the pathoma guy actually came to St. George's when we were there. It was his first year. Yeah. So he was no. promoting his book and he came down there. And, and we were like, what and, is whoa, this? Whoa, we're like, done. I finally understand. <laughs> no, I yeah. agree with you. I think the professors are there. Like, again, you know, the concepts in med medicine are not that hard. It's, you know, a couple concepts here and there. Physiology is the toughest. But once you put that down, it's just sheer memorization. So when you're in, you know, when you go to class, obviously it's repetition. You got to go to class. You hear it once. You see it again. You you study it. It's just about what you put in after class. It's not really about the professors, in my opinion. And I think you all agree, and I think everyone in med, med school agrees to that. It's just memorizing. And one thing I'll say is, people don't realize this, but and I, I know you guys do now. Uh, but and I'm sure you guys did from the beginning. But like. Uh, Step one is key. You have, if it's in the step one book, it's going to be on your test. Like, that's a the, fact. The first aid book. And I mean, the, the first aid book. Yeah, yeah. First, first aid, first aid step one. Yeah, first aid book. Yeah. And if it's, it's on there, it's going to be on your test. And if you, if you use that from the beginning, like you are, um, you know, you, you do fine on the, uh, on the boards because that, all that stuff is just going to, I'm going to be uh, repeated. You and know? somebody else is asking what other resources we use for step studying and you world, like the question banks um is is something that i think you use. guys actually so we didn't have this but you guys the fifth term you guys you guys get your world yeah oh, wow. so in term five um they're going to give you your world because they're expecting you to sit down and really step study uh, yeah, that's so fun. i'm that's looking forward to that <laughs> it's fun your world is actually fun after a while like when you start like getting a lot of questions right you're like dang i got this i got it. it's, it's fun Oh, oh, this is a good question. Um, how often were you able to visit home while you were at SGU? We, we see your stories, and we saw that you recently went home. I, I actually went to LA. I didn't even oh, go home. LA. I went to see family. But um, in term one, I didn't go home. In term two, I went once. And then term three, I didn't because it's short, but I did go to LA. So I've yeah. been home like three times. I've left three times. Yeah, I, we didn't go. I mean, I'm from LA, so I didn't go back that often. I just went on my breaks. You yeah. didn't. You, yeah, you I mean, the, the, the terms are like four months, so it's not too terrible. Um, I went to Buffalo once, like my first year, because I was homesick. So for Thanksgiving, I, I did go back. And then when she met me, she never left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but we do get long breaks, so that's like the bonus. So our the breaks family, are real our, good. Yeah. Oh, and then during the breaks, too. Like, um, you can do selectives, which is what we did. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for one of our breaks, I went to Prague. 
um, and it was a medical selective, and that's something that St. George's offers, which I think is amazing. And you went to Thailand. I went to Thailand. I went to Prague. Good yeah. selective. And so now I, I did, I did that on more... both breaks, actually. So I didn't really – I went home for a bit, I think, each break, but I went on a selective to another country. And I hear there's more countries now, too. I think so. I think I've heard of a few more on there. Yeah, like there's, like, Kenya. Kenya. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's India and stuff, too, so that's great. They have really cool stuff, so – um, living on campus versus off campus. We okay. lived on I, campus. What about you? I'm living on campus. I'm in my dorm. It, the Okay, they have a new dorm, and the new dorms are absolutely beautiful um, in Gary Hall. I'm in the second newest dorm, which is Morris, and I like it because I like that my lecture hall is, like, literally down the stairs and across the street, um, and, like, the gym's right next to me, so I have no commute issues. But if you want, like, a bigger place and if you want, like, your own space, then definitely going off campus. There's a lot of new places that have just been developed. There's brand new, like, condos all around um, the True Blue area, which is the street that's, like, right off of campus. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but yeah. if you want bigger space, it's it's there. And then if you want less pricey, but you're willing to commute and, like, get a car or a scooter, then there's places a little bit further off campus. So they're all great options. They're all safe. <laughs> Yeah, we stayed on campus the whole time, and, you know, I, I think it's better to stay on campus personally because, again, you're in med school. You don't need other distractions personally. Like, when you're at home, you have a TV. Like, there's no TV in the dorm, right? Okay. When you're at home, you have a TV. You have oh, video, I didn't think about that. You, you don't have video games. Everyone, I guarantee you, every guy who lives on campus probably has video games. They you do. don't have that on the dorms, <laughs> and it's like, it's just, you. and when you see me personally, again, what I think is when you're in med school, when you see everyone else around you studying, it makes you study that much more. There were times where I was, I was like about to go to the gym or about to play basketball or something, and then my roommate would be studying. I'm like, yo, if he's studying, I got to study too. So I literally would turn around and I would go study until we were all done, and then we would go play. So like that essence, I think you should stay on campus, personal opinion. I got a lot of opinions. I agree. So I agree. You guys know. And you guys should probably just <laughs> go. Is there another question to there? Uh, let me scroll. Oh, also, I wanted to add, um, I know we were sure. talking about the American um, American loan system. So the Canadian loan system is a little yeah. bit different. If you're applying as a Canadian, um, we have, like, province-wise, you'll have your own um, government funding. So I'm from Ontario, and we have OSAP. But the problem is that OSAP will only um, pay partial tuition. So I think, you know, over the four years, I get, like, $20,000 Canadian. Um and like the school has to sign off on those kinds of things so it's not like the american um, loan services where they give you your full tuition plus board and everything um so if you're a canadian you're actually going to have to get either you have some money saved up or you're going to need a, a line of credit they do offer student line of credits for caribbean schools and um, i think cibc is actually the one that's um partnered with a lot of the caribbean schools so they will give you more than any other of the any other banks um so you'd have to look into that and get it co-signed usually. So that's something that's different. There's a lot of Canadians at SGUs. That's what they, if you're from Canada, SGUs is a good spot for sure. And I think I also some, saw someone's question about why I didn't choose to go to um, the Global Scholars route. So when I was um, applying, they really wanted, they tried to push the Canadians to go that way because the Americans don't uh, have their loans over there. Um, uh, so basically what it is that you can do your first year, all the same lectures, um, but only um, you get to do it in the UK. Um, I forget where they are. Some are really Newcastle. nice. Um, and you, Newcastle. Newcastle. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you get to do your full first year in Newcastle. Um, and a lot of my friends went and they loved it. And um, then they come and do their second year on the island. I didn't go because when I was applying, there was this rule that you'd have to do two years in one location to be um, accredited for, I think, New Jersey and a few other states. Mm -hmm. They had that rule, but then they changed it right when we started. So that's no longer an issue as far as I've heard. Um, so if you if you get accepted into the Newcastle route, like, why not? I know they were, like, spending their post-exam tradition was to go around Europe. Yeah, different Yeah, I would have, I mean, I had the option to do it. They asked me, like, do you want to do it? And I was like, no, I'll just go to the island. But, like, in, in, in retrospect, like, it probably would have been really fun to do, obviously. Again, you're probably not having a blast like people think, but your post exams would be go traveling, which is which is definitely cool. Yeah, but you gotta like keep that in mind. If you know that you're the kind of person who's gonna like think about the traveling more than the studying, sure, then, right, exactly. You'd wanna go somewhere where you're like less yeah. to do stuff. 
stuff. Um, For sure. But it's an option. <laughs> um, so what else? Why don't you tell us about your, how do you do all the things you do on campus and still make time for studying? Because I know you're yeah, doing, yeah, you know, sleep. I know you're doing <laughs> everything out there. Like, <laughs> why don't you tell us that? Uh, okay, so I- People are dying to know. Two dance teams. I was nice. on the girls soccer team, but the field has been under renovation this whole term, so it's not up and running yet. Um, I just prioritize my time. Like, my exercise is my extracurriculars, and it's also my social time. So, like, I go to dance, I get to talk to people, I get to work out, and then I come back and study. So, no, you got good, like you got a, good balance. Yeah. Yeah, you really do. It's great. Yeah, very really good balance. Someone's so, asking about rotations. That's all rotations. You <laughs> all right. So rotations, you're going to start third year. You're going to do your core rotations, um, peds, ob surgery, medicine, um, and family medicine, family and, medicine psychiatry. and psychiatry. Those are your core rotations. Those are in your third year. You wake up early in the morning. You go there. You see your patients. You round. You round with the team. Uh, it's kind of, you know, you, the, it's, it's, it's cool because you take everything what you learn from the USMLE and you basically put it into the hospital setting. That's where you have to kind of, um, outside of your grades, that's where you have to start impressing people on uh, like who you are as a person, what type of doctor you are, and that's where you kind of get your letters of rec. So um, pe some people take it lightly, but it's a, it's pretty it's fun, but it's it's serious, and you have to just take it pretty seriously. And it's a uh... and for those of you who don't know, the third and fourth year of um, St. George's is back in the states. Back. In the so states. your first two years, you do in the Caribbean, which is your basic sciences, where you're studying, um, you know, learning. It's a lot of book learning. And then your second two years is the more hands-on learning, which is when you're rotating through clinics and hospitals and really getting the feel of what specialty you want to go into. So you better learn those soap notes. <laughs> Learning them. <laughs> and, you know, what's good, I think you guys do way more OSCE practice than we did. You guys oh. seem to, when I talk to my brother there a lot, like he's always studying for an OSCE. Like, so you guys do good. I think that you guys are getting good training. And my brother said that you guys do ultrasound now over there. That's true. Yeah, in the, in first That's year we good. did all the ultrasounds, and I love doing those. Yeah, so we didn't do that first. So like, issues like literally like it's 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 coming through. And we did our rotations mostly in New York. You can do them in California, Michigan, a couple other states. But somebody's asking if you can do them in Canada. Do you know? Um, so we don't have full um, full locations in Canada, but they do have a few where you can do elect. Well, you can definitely sign up to do electives there. And then there's um, an affiliation with, I think it's the Victoria Hospital or something in British Columbia, where you can do some of your uh, rotations, but not all of them yet in Canada. Okay. Yeah, I knew people who did electives. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And the important thing that I've heard is that if you do want to go back to Canada or if you want to apply to Canada, you definitely need to do your electives and some rotations there because you will need okay. Canadian reference letters. Okay. So that's, so that's something to yeah. keep in mind. Yeah. Um, would you pick SGU again? Yeah, for sure. I met you. I, would too. I met you, baby. <laughs> I would too. At the end of the day, like we're both doing what we want. We got the opportunity to, you know, work in the career that we always dreamt of working in. Um, I'm working as an attending. He's a fellow, and so you know, SGU gave us that opportunity. We're very grateful for SGU, and we—that's the reason we're doing this because I feel like we want to make sure that people get the right information out about Caribbean schools and St. George's in particular. Don't read Student Doctor Net or whatever that whatever that website. Don't is. read Reddit. Yeah. Oh, you guys see like none of those things. We're pretty old, Definitely. man. Because nobody reads it anymore. Well, Reddit. Is like, <laughs> oh, Reddit. Yeah, I've never got on Reddit. <laughs> no. Um, but like, I'm just a year and a bit out from when I started here, and I could tell you that I'm so happy I made this decision. Um, when I hit my year mark, I was like, oh, so this would be the time that I'd be figuring out, like, if I got into school again or not. And here I am, like, already halfway done on the island. And I think, like, that was more valuable to me than to sit and wait and wonder and not even get in, maybe. So I'm just happy that I'm doing it and I'm going. No, it's really good you're there. I mean, I'm, we already came back once. We plan to do it again. It's a, it's a really cool place. And honestly. And time like, goes by fast. And, and one thing. So and fast. I, I don't, I don't know if this is a fact because I didn't go to U.S. med school, but like I work at a hospital that's affiliated with the U.S. med school. So I know and I interact with the U.S. med students a lot and it have been since residency. The community that you have at SGU is like you can't beat that. 
uh, that's I think what makes people like love it so much. At least I think all three of us love it. For uh, that's one of the many reasons we loved it. Is like the community you you find over there. Just like everyone on this one path to like succeed. Everyone lives in like these core close quarters, but like you get your own dorm room. You get to go hang out whenever you want. You get to go get coffee. It's like all like a. It's I like to describe it as like a really big high school or a really little college. And it's like a really, really nice community, which I don't think you get that at U.S. med schools. Not saying that, you know, you shouldn't go to U.S. med school, but I'm just saying, like, that is one of the perks that if you do decide to go to SU, like, that's... It's your by, family away by from far, home. By far, it's like, it, it's so nice. And that's why, you know, again, living on campus was like my thing. Like, I wanted to live on campus because you had that community. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, I feel like everyone's, like, super friendly and you make a lot of friends here and everyone's just, like, really caring and helpful and, like... You do your laundry, and so if you, like, forget it, people will, like, fold your laundry for you. Wow. <laughs> what? Yeah, like, and this, like, it happens to me I had once, to fight her to, I had to fight her to fold my laundry, man. Why would I fold your laundry? It's happened to me once, but there's been other people who, like, post in our, like, dormitory Facebook group saying, like, thanks to the person who folded the laundry. I'm sorry I was oh, late to nice. take it out of the dryer. Like, people are just nah, so we nice. Just, we were just, I would just take it out. I would take it out and put it on the top. <laughs> oh, from the dryer at least. From the not dryer, from the yeah. Washroom. That's at least nice. That would have been. But nice. we lived in. I lived in one of those buildings where it, it was one dryer to like ten people, so we knew everybody who was doing it. So it was good. Um, one of the questions we're getting is about research opportunities. Do you guys? What are your thoughts about research opportunities while you're on the island? They are there. You have to maintain like an eighty-five um, WMPG. Um, or whatever WGPA um, to be able to apply for um, research spots, but they're available. Like there's a lot of people who are doing research and there's people who do like MPH here. So the, okay, the possibilities are there if you want to do it in first two years and you can definitely do them in your clinical years as well. So. Yeah, I think that's fair too, to make sure that there's like a grade requirement because at the end of the day, what's most important is that you're learning the information. Yeah. And that's for anything. I know people are, you know, asking about shadowing and volunteering and extracurricular stuff. And at the end of the day, the, the thing that matters the most is like to make sure you're getting the grades and learning the information first. Um, and then when you, sure. like you said, when you're in, doing clinical rotations, when you come back in your third and fourth year, you're really rotating um, at hospitals that have residents, that have fellows. And so those guys are always doing research, always looking for medical students to help out. And so the research opportunities, your third and fourth year of medical school are very abundant. What else you got? I'm just contemplating and thinking about you <laughs> and me and your story in med school. <laughs> Um, the government for giving loans after 10 years. I oh, have man, heard about it. Question. I have heard about it. I don't personally know anyone yet. I think <laughs> it started in 2007. So the first payout was supposed to be 2017. So um, hopefully people Ooh. got it. I, I'm relying on it. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we need to find some people who graduated 2000. I know. I think my attend some of my attendings, I'm going to ask them. Um, where There's are you one getting cook your meals oh go ahead oh yeah okay where do you cook your meals <laughs> <laughs> i cook on campus i have a full full kitchen here yeah it, there's like a fridge there's a stove there's no oven though right there isn't but we have a toaster oven in our place and it works oh, great. Just fine i've made lasagna in there i bake cakes in there it's all good my roommate my roommate used to make uh a cheesecake <laughs> oh yum dude he used to I make want your his roommate. best he used to make the best cheesecake. It was insane. Remember when I tried to make you a cheesecake? Yeah, it was bad. She, <laughs> but before she knew how to cook, before she knew how to cook, she knows how to cook real well now. But before, oh, man. The first time I made him eggs, he threw them in the hey, garbage. Hey, don't tell everybody these stories. I was a bad person. I was a bad person back in the day. Oh, at least you tried. Wait, what are some um, items you recommend for incoming term one students? Um, get some comfy scrubs because you will live in them here. It's not like um, American med schools, like you wear your scrubs and then you wear them all day and it's great. Um, we never wear scrubs, that's different than you guys do. Yeah, like when do you but guys wear scrubs are them? like now in fashion, so. They're guess, totally in fashion here. <laughs> scrubs are like totally in fashion. We didn't, we didn't wear scrubs at But all. like, do you, wait, do you guys have like a lot more labs that you're wearing them in or is it just in general to class you're wearing them? No, we have more, like we have double lab days and there's like definitely, all of the anatomy labs, you have to wear a scrub. You have mm -hmm. to wear them for CPD. 
and then like oh, okay. half the time you already have half and CBD all together so you just wear them um, yeah for us it was only like our first term during anatomy lab that we really wore them and that was it but now there's oh, so no, great wet. companies with really cute scrubs so. yep. <laughs> uh, it's one of the questions uh, what else you have I think like for the most part, you don't need to bring anything down unless, like, there's specific food that you love that's, like, non-perishable. Then you can bring those down so you feel like it's at home because there's a lot of things that you won't be able to get on the island. So I have, like, my favorite mac and cheese that I save for, like, rainy days. I used to bring um, Maggie noodles. <laughs> Yum. I didn't bring anything. I have my Wait, I think I brought pro I just brought protein. <laughs> protein, was that's all I brought. Um, oh, so if you, if you drink protein powder or, like, protein shakes, Bring your own protein. It is worth the extra luggage weight. It's mad than expensive. To buy it here. It's and mad it's expensive like, out there. Super expensive. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. I have like two huge containers that I've been keeping for the trip. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I know we see you working out, looking good. <laughs> One of the questions is about family visiting and where they get to stay. Um, I don't think there's spots on campus, but there's a lot of nice resorts and hotels, right? Yeah, there isn't, but they do have resorts. So, like, there's True Blue, which is pretty close, or the Radisson, which a lot of parents like to stay at. It's on, like, the main breach, beach. And um, if you say that you're from, like, visiting an SGU student, I think they give you a discount, so you can, like, call them and talk about okay. that. I think they can uh, stay at the faculty club, too. I think, if you're a family. I, th I think alumni only. I think oh, it's maybe. only alumni. Maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah you, they can definitely stay. And if you have your own place um, off campus, then they can stay with you. But... Be sure to have them come down after exams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for that's sure, important. For sure. Remember when your parents went, it was really hard for them because his yeah, brother my... was studying for exams, and so they saw him just for a couple hours. Yeah, so they want, you can't to... have them come down after. <laughs> people, people want us to talk about scores. All right, so people want us to talk about scores. Um, scores definitely have to be better than average. Um, when we were told about USMLE Step 1, we were told when we were studying, 240 should be the goal. 240, you should ingrain that in your head, 240. Now, that being said, there are many people who got above 240. There are many people who got 240. There are many people who got below 240. As long as you're in somewhere kind of in that range, you'll be good. And even people who did lower, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but if you, even people who got lower, everybody who we know matched at some point. I would say 99.9% .9 of the people we knew matched right away the first time. And if they didn't match, for whatever reason, the second or the third time they ended up getting. So you will figure out a way to do it. But just to be safe, that's why they say 240, and that should be your goal now. Because, you, again, you are going against American students. And American students, you know, if you have the – they're only going to, you know, want you if you have a score comparable to theirs or above theirs. So you want to just give yourself all the opportunity you can and get that good score. And, again, that good score is very attainable. Um, if you study, if you study, that's just plain and simple. Um, if someone was asking if it's easy to get around, do you go grocery shopping? I do. I actually just take the buses most of the time. And there's the one bus that will take you straight to the grocery store and back. You can take mm -hmm. a cab as well, um, which I'll sometimes split with my friend if I'm coming home with a bunch of ice cream. But that's, the buses you are fine. They do their trick. Yeah, we rented a car. So when I was there, like, we were, like, kind of over the bus. So second term, me and four guys, which I'm sure you guys do too, me and four guys rented a car. Every month we paid like, I don't know, like some EC. It wasn't that crazy. It wasn't super expensive. We just split it between four or five guys, and that, that's how we got around. So uh, either way is fine. Uh, uh, I think Hottest, my brother, who's there, he doesn't have a car either. He just takes the bus. So it's totally, like, fine. Yeah, at the, at the moment, there's um, there's, like, limited parking spots. So unless you're not on campus, it's better not to – not have a car so if you're living on campus don't bother with the car okay yeah. you're gonna have to park it far far away anyways and then you're just spending that same amount of time walking walking car. off yeah <laughs> that's true does it make a difference to do clinical rotations at a teaching hospital with an established residency program most of your rotations if not all of them are going to be at programs that have residency programs um very I don't, you know, yeah. rare case i don't think i ever did 
I don't think we did any rotations outside yeah. of this. So, so I mean, they're all going to be at really... they're all going to be at re established residency programs. So it's actually great. You know, St. George's is partnered with um, residencies and hospitals that have res like established residency programs. So, for example, if you're doing an internal medicine rotation, you have internal medicine residents that are you know guiding you. If you're doing your surgery rotation, there's surgery residents that are there. And the reason that's good, um, the reason that that means that SGU is, you know, also looking out for their students is because you always have a better chance of getting recommendation letters from someone who you've worked with and from for getting interviews at the same hospital that, you know, you're, you're with that has that residency program. So definitely, I don't think there was a single hospital that I rotated at that didn't have a residency program. And most of them had fellowships as well. What else? Um, how expensive as just thought, how expensive is it to get things shipped? <laughs> so my brother, my brother, he was, he hit me up. He's like, yo man, can you send me this, 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 this? And it was like little things. This is when he first went to the island. And uh, I was like, yeah, sure, man. Let me, uh, it's probably gonna be really expensive, but let me go see. I went to like UPS or whatever. It was like absurd amount of money to ship things. So in my opinion, and I told him, I was like, yo man, the stuff that you want me to ship is not even worth what they're charging. So don't get anything shipped. Whatever you want to take, just take it in your suitcase, hand carry, and then most, I think, 95% of the things that you need, you can find on the island, which I think now you guys can even get more stuff there. Yeah, we can. So I actually, um, I shipped a barrel before I came down. Okay, so, some people did that. We did, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was helpful because I had, like, my bedding and my pillows and my, uh, my nutri bullet and stuff so things that were heavy <laughs> i didn't want to put into a suitcase it was actually cheaper to ship the barrel because the barrel i think i paid like 200 dollars canadian and then you just have to plan it ahead of time so like i shipped it three weeks before i came down and it got here a week after me um and then you just have to go to the docks and pick it up this one time um be aware that they might tax you on it so try to put the more expensive stuff at the bottom and the things that they won't tax so much at the top um but yeah don't like try to get things shipped here i've had like companies try to ship me things and like they never get here or they want to tax them some ridiculous amount of money so <laughs> when you yeah. do pick them up yeah um we got asked about um whether or not we did rotations in the same location so we were very fortunate we did all of our rotations in brooklyn except for one because he's a cali boy so i dragged out to California for a month, which wasn't the worst thing. So I went there for a month and um, checked out a California rotation as well. But, you know, a lot of the, even if you're not doing it all in Brooklyn, you could be living in Brooklyn and doing in Queens and Jersey. So they're all really very close. It's easy to get to these hospitals together. Um, have you, oh no, you're going to select next term, right? Yeah, I'm selecting next term. So we'll see oh, how okay. that goes. <laughs> That's great. Um, and then, Chicago hospitals don't have residency programs. Do you recommend not going there? Um, I actually, um, I don't know. I think it's important that, that you go to a hospital that has residents because teaching is emphasized so much more. So I think that was one of the reasons that, you know, you should pick up a, a place that has residents. Um, one, teaching is there. Two, they will, they, if they like you, they might accept you into that program, which is also great. Did you answer the Chicago one? Yeah, I just did that. All right. Is there anything else you want to add? I know we're taking you away from precious studying time. Yeah, so we're going to no, keep going. It's all so good. No, no worries. worries. Yeah. Um, Let any us last minute question, guys? Burning questions you have? Uh, um, what was your most memorable rotation? For us, it was internal medicine. That's why we picked it. So we picked it, internal medicine. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you give us some closing thoughts? Um, overall, I think that, you know, there's a lot of curiosity about Caribbean medical schools. People have a lot of fear, which is completely understandable. Um, anytime you are, you know, you're going to a completely different country, there's a lot of unknown. Um, I think one of the things that I always tell people who ask me is that, you know, at the end of the day, like this is an opportunity for you to pursue the career of your dreams. So take it. Uh, and, you know, do well, and, and you can come back and be successful. So there's no reason to shy away from it and just dive in and do it. Yeah. And I completely agree with that. The other thing I would add is, like, if you choose it, 
know what you're choosing and definitely put in the effort because that's the main thing that's going to get you out of here and doing what you love. So um, when you make the choice, make it 100% and go full force with it without like hesitation of like, oh, did I make the wrong choice? Like stick to your choice and go with it. Yeah, definitely. And what about you? Any last minute, last thoughts? You know, I got thoughts. <laughs> so my thing, my last thing is basically you, anything you do, people always say, oh, is it, gonna, is it hard? Is it hard to come back? Is, you know, what if I, you know, everyone thinks it's hard. Everyone thinks they're not going to be able to come back. Anything that's worthwhile in life that you want to do is hard. And again, I'll bring it up again. The, the person in finance, the person who's a lawyer, the person who works anywhere, it's tough. Life is tough, but you just have to make it through. And obviously going to the Caribbean is a big decision that you have to make. But if you make it for the good reasons, and if you make it because you really, really want to be a doctor and that at that moment is your opportunity you're getting, you should feel like fully free in making that opportunity. You should take that opportunity if it's there. And as long as you put in the work, everything will be all right and you'll make it back and everything's going to be good. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to take off on those. Yes. Mita, thank you so much for joining. Thanks, and guys. We, we, Thanks we for need, answering all those questions. We need to do more and, of these. And guys, there's, like, she's posted, like, if you're ever looking, so many of you ask me questions about life and everything, go to her profile. Like, it's amazing. Like, she gives you guys so much, like, real life about, and it's, like, real time, like, what she's doing. And so you can really learn a lot from what she's up to. And thank everybody you. who said we're going to save your wisdom. this. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to save this video. Hopefully, I'm going to save it properly. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Peace, Bye. everybody. Bye, guys. Take care. Uh, end. End. Oh. End. <laughs> I don't want to lose this. I don't want to lose this right now. All right, hold on. All right.